The next slides consider the special features of Dirana. Dirana aims to improve the older methods PDC and FDS. The measurement of the dielectric response as well as its interpretation can be improved. On the measurement side, its duration was decreased substantially. This was achieved by combining frequency domain measurement and time domain measurement. Essentially, time domain measurements can be accomplished in a short time but are limited to low frequencies, typically below 1 Hz. In contrast, frequency domain measurements are feasible for high frequencies as well, but take a very long time at low frequencies. Thus, Dirana measures high frequencies measured in the frequency domain, but low frequencies in the time domain. The time domain data were then transformed into the frequency domain for further analysis. By this combination, the duration of one measurement decreases to typically 25% of the time needed for a normal frequency domain measurement. This diagram illustrates the decrease in measurement time. If there is a need to acquire data from 1000 Hz down to 0.1 MHz, around 11 hours are required with the conventional FDS approach. A newer instrument is somewhat faster but still needs approximately 6 hours. Dirana requires 2 hours and 50 minutes, only about 25 to 45 percent of the time previously needed. The measurement of polarization and depolarization currents, PDC, will need about five and a half hours, but will deliver data only for frequencies below 1 Hz, not for higher frequencies. Dirana covers the full range and does it also much faster than the older methods. Of course, there arises the question if a measurement really always takes such a long time, or can it be interrupted earlier? This can be explained once again using the presentation of dissipation factor against frequency. We want to know how wet the transformer is. The diagram shows that moisture dominantly affects the low frequencies here on the left-hand side of the hump. The hump itself is influenced by insulation geometry, the area of the steep gradient by oil conductivity. Thus, the measurement must be made down to very low frequencies where the properties of press board become visible. That means it is made until the hump appears and then for an additional three or five points. A reliable moisture determination requires the appointed frequency range. Consequently, there are no strict frequency limits for a measurement of the dielectric response. It depends on the condition of the specific transformer concerning moisture content and temperature. A good practice is to observe the shape of the dissipation factor curve during the measurement. The user can stop the measurement when the hump and some additional points on its left hand side appear. Typical frequency ranges are for a dry transformer or low temperatures the full range down to 0.1 MHz is needed. This takes nearly three hours. If the moisture content is moderate or if the temperature is higher then 1 millihertz is sufficient. That results in a tested duration of 22 minutes. For a very wet transformer or a high temperature, 0.1 hertz is sufficient. Thus the measurement duration will be only 5 minutes. Besides the faster measurement, the analysis of the data has been improved. The analysis is done by comparing a data set from a laboratory to the measurement of the real transformer. Hence, at first, a reliable data pool obtained from laboratory measurements is needed. The Dirana software features weighing of low frequency data. This means the low frequencies are particularly studied because it is known that the transformer is particularly affected by water content at the lower frequencies. Finally, there is compensation for conductive aging byproducts. The diagram here on the left hand side shows how aging influences the dielectric response. For example, the blue curve here shows 2% moisture content under new conditions. An aged press board having only 1.2% moisture content is displayed as the yellow curve. So the moisture content is very different, but the losses are very similar. The conductive aging byproducts increase the losses and thus appear as water. The customer might dry the transformer, but in reality it was not particularly wet. Therefore, we need to compensate for the influence of aging. For this reason, Dirana includes an automatic compensation algorithm to provide reliable results even for aged transformers. 
The following shows how the software works and how to analyze the results. After measuring the dielectric response of the transformer, the measurement is compared to a database. The database consists of the dielectric response of press board samples of known water content. These were measured in the laboratory. In order to compensate for the influence of temperature, the insulation temperature of the real transformer is required. The parameter is very important, otherwise there can be no compensation for temperature and the wrong results will appear. The dielectric response of the press board samples is then combined with that of oil using the so-called XY model. The XY model compares the ratio of press boards to oil and delivers a modeled dielectric response. Then, a fitting algorithm combines the modeled dielectric response to the measured dielectric response. The fitting algorithm changes the parameters of the model until it reaches the best fit. Finally, the results are obtained for moisture content and oil conductivity. How does it work in the Dirana software? This diagram shows various results of measurements from real transformers. First, with a new dry transformer measured in the factory. In this case, the full frequency range of 0.1 Hz was measured, but the hump did not appear. Where is the hump in this measurement? It would appear at frequencies even below 0.1 mHz. In this case, the measurement was done in the frequency domain, thus it had already taken 11 hours. To get additional points at lower frequencies, measuring would have taken days. So while only measuring in the frequency domain, such a very dry transformer could hardly be analyzed. Using Dirana, it is possible, because the results can be achieved faster by combining the time and frequency domains. The second transformer was measured at moderate wetness. Thus, the curve is shifted to the right-hand side and the hump is slightly visible. The third example shows a heavily aged transformer. The dissipation factor at power frequency is already 11%. Here, the hump is clearly visible at 5 Hz, so the measurement would have stopped at about 0.1 Hz. A measurement to lower frequencies is not required. The fourth example shows a transformer measured at 44 degrees Celsius. The hump appeared and some additional points, so there are sufficient data for moisture analysis. So, to analyze the moisture content of this transformer, a comparison is possible between the real transformer measurement and the modeled dielectric response. In this diagram, the measured dielectric response is brown and the modeled result is shown in red. What does the user need to enter? The only totally necessary requirement is the insulation temperature. If the user knows something about the insulation geometry, about the barriers and about the spacers, this would of course help the analysis, but it is not absolutely necessary. It will be calculated. Note the red curve and watch how it changes its shape. The software tries different combinations of insulation geometry, oil conductivity and moisture, and finally it arrives at a good agreement between model curve and measured curve. The resulting moisture content is 1.7% and the oil conductivity 9 picosiemens. 1.7% is a moderate water content. It is not really wet and it is not dry but somewhere in between. Let us now have a look at the assessment of this aged transformer. The automatic moisture analysis calculates around 3.9% moisture content. Now, the relative amount of barriers and spacers is changed to 30%. Previously, it was 20%, as calculated by the automatic assessment. Once again, the assessment is started and shows 4.2% compared to 3.9%. Therefore, there is only a slight influence because of geometry. Lack of geometry data is not a problem, but in order to compensate for this influence, we need measurement data on the left-hand side of the hump. Otherwise, the properties of the solid insulation are hidden by oil conductivity and insulation geometry. The ratio of press board to oil is also addressed on this slide. The cylindrical transformer insulation is modeled by an area of oil, of spacers, and of barriers. X represents the volume percentage of barriers, and Y that of the spacers. This diagram shows geometry conditions of real transformers. The blue curve depicts the amount of spacers and is always between 13 and 20 percent. 
the amount of barriers ranges from 20 to 50 percent. Old transformers typically have higher values, new transformers have rather less press board. These limits are set also in the Durana software, accessible via the advanced tab settings. The definite geometry condition will be calculated by the software. This diagram provides an estimation of the accuracy of water determination. The user should not place too much emphasis on the numbers themselves. They merely provide an estimation. The y-axis displays the insulation temperature and the x-axis the moisture content. The gray dotted rectangle marks the typical range of power transformers. The highest accuracy will be reached at temperatures between 15 and 45 degrees Celsius and moisture contents between 0.8 and 4 percent. The accuracy will be lower at temperatures outside of this range. The temperature behavior of various press board materials differs. For this reason, the accuracy decreases if they leave the stated range. Also, aging byproducts diminish accuracy, although there is a built-in compensation. In the range of highest accuracy, the uncertainty will be plus or minus 15 percent of the reading. That means a moisture content of 2 percent has a variation of 1.7 to 2.3 percent. This accuracy far surpasses that of the old oil sampling methods using equilibrium diagrams where deviations between 2.5 and 5 percent moisture content were typical. To achieve this, however, the software needs three to five measurement points on the left-hand side of the hump.